On the 1st of November 2013, in Cape Coast, a group of young students aged 11 to 16 are engaged in an innovative program to educate about coastal environmental degradation. They've been put together by a team from the Hans Seidel Foundation and the Institute of Environments and Sanitation Studies of the University of Ghana, Legon. What do you mean by this? Is the river for you? Or are you the one who created it? It is for all of us, so you cannot prevent me from dumping rapists inside. I can prevent you. Shut up. We wanted to look at the youth and children, look at the kind of environmental attitudes that they have, how we can change you know, these attitudes and also change their behaviors. Looking at youth education, youth empowerment, because Hans Seidel is about empowerment and good governance. So please, I want to educate you to stop using these materials to pollute the environment because you can use it for new things. Thank you. It is definitely true that adults are the ones who make decisions in, in any society. Um, at the same time, I think, and this is true not only for Ghana but for the whole world, it is very difficult to change somebody's mind if that person has already been, been living with those attitudes for a long time, for many years. But with kids, most of them are in school, so they are already learning things. And then too, they, they are molding you know, their values still and their attitudes. So if we target them now, then the hope is that as they grow, then they will be able to grow with these new value sets that they, we inculcate in them. The program started with a series of youth interaction workshops and exhibition showcases in five coastal communities. Chokome in Greater Accra, Akosia Village in the Central Region, Diako in Cape Coast, Anglo Beach in the Western Region, and Anyanui in the Volta Region. We carried out the first training or interactive workshop where the participants um, identified various environmental issues in their communities and uh, probable solutions. We let the communities and the children determine the issues that we looked at. We didn't go into the communities with, uh, with preconceptions. We knew that the children would have certain things that were important to them and we wanted to focus on those things rather than Come in, come in with a set of values which we would impose. Most of the issues centered around um, sanitation, yes, poor sanitation are along the coast, but there were other issues that were um, talked as, about as well. Some of the environmental problems are sand winning. For that place, there's sand winning, everyday activity. And sometimes you go to the beach to refresh yourself, maybe relax, and mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. smell is very bad. People dump refuse into the water and some defecate on the wetland. And more likely to, they use chemicals for fishing. And also, they exploit the wetland by excessive cut down of mangrove at the bank of the rivers. So it has made it difficult for us to enjoy the, uh, the, the natural resources in the wetland. Then we came up with some posters very large posters, uh, three meter by two meter posters, which highlighted all the different environmental issues that children had, had identified. 
and we asked them to say how they'll solve it and they came up with their solutions then we asked them how would you tell people who are not here about what you have learned or what you know and that is when they came up with different approaches so some chose plays some drew posters some had news reports some had poems some made songs and dances we left it entirely up to the children what they would want to do what is happening to our world what is happening to our world see men women children and animals desperately looking for me what's that see the whole world meeting at the highest level of government to discuss me because i'm dwindling away fast in quantity quality and globally these showcases culminated in Cape Coast with a Champion of Champions competition among the best youth groups from migrant coastal communities. As the competition progressed, a panel of judges scored their performances and at the end of the day declared the winning group. The best youth group winner on the 1st November of 2013. This is the first winner, this is the champion, of champions. We are happy, happy forever. We are happy, we are happy, happy forever. Oh, 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 we are happy, happy forever. From school, we come in for practice. Even we close about 4, 3, 30 to 4 o'clock. So, we, we, we are proud, we are proud in doing this. For training children is better than to train the adults because they are the youth, so they are moving uh, side by side, watching the distance, the adult. But adults, they are mature in that, they will hide themselves and go out and do it. They did a marvelous work. We see that their costume, preparation, their body language, appearance was wonderful. One thing that I enjoy so much is that uh, within the, the, the play, they provided solutions to the problem. And I think if children begin to think this way, it's a good thing for our nation. I think they all did very, very wonderful. Especially the group that won, and they added the innovation of actually showing what some of the products from Sunny, some of the waste products could be, which is the fun that they showed to people and they even shared to the judges. So I'm, I'm, I'm happy with all of them and I want to encourage them to continue. You know. Apart from educating children, the project has a research component that will add to the body of scientific knowledge about migrant coastal communities. We took a slightly different focus. We looked at communities where we had a high proportion of migrants. Now we chose other migrant communities because of the issue of vulnerability and the issue of marginalization that has not been looked at when you take research in general. There's been a lot of research in mig on migration, but most of them look at north-south migration. But there's a lot of migration along the coast, among the fishermen, and it has been going on for centuries. So that is where the research component comes in to look at first of all changes with perceptions environmental perceptions with migration that is why we are looking at Anyanui in the Volta region and then compare it that's the home community or the control so we are comparing that to the four other migrant communities to see if maybe the further they move from the Volta region are there changes in their environmental perceptions and all that we also wanted to find out how true the children's perception was to the reality. So we had another study taking place where we scientifically assess the state of the coast. Called the coastal profiling. That one is purely scientific. We are going to the environment, the natural environment, and we are looking at certain in indicators of environmental pollution. If we took water quality as an issue, we went in and we actually took samples, brought it to the lab, and then we tested it. So there were 10 of these topics, and they included the fisheries. We looked at the sizes of the fish. We looked at the species for diversity reasons. And then so all that gave us that information about what was actually going on with the fisheries. 
At the end of this cooperation, I think um, we would like to see two things. Most importantly, obviously, um, will be a change of attitude in, in students' and children's minds regarding en environmental issues. Um, this is why we are carrying out this kind of civic education from the scratch. Since we're working with an academic institution from a university, from a Ghanaian university, um, we, we wish to produce a well elaborated, well researched study, which the colleagues are already working on, have been working on for quite some time. A very key component we are looking at is the issue of sustainability. We know that most projects come and go and then things die down. So we are trying to make sure that within the communities they form groups. We've already had about two being formed. In Anyanwe, they have the Environmental and Sanitation Club. We have uh, started some workshop with this organization and uh, we have established a club named Anyangui Environmental and Sanitation Club. Uh, they took us through a lot of uh, learning and we had a lot of ma learning materials from them. So through this process, we have acquired much knowledge about how we can take care of our environment. The community has realized that uh, we were losing something valuable. So the children who are members of the club went around to educate their parents, educate students, and educate the religious bodies about all these things. Now we have uh, noticed a great change. People are now uh, organizing cleanup exercise on the wetland. I think it will, they will continue. So far as, especially the place that they are doing, you go there and the young ones who are now in class one, class two, they are imitating. The children are able to communicate with their parents and we ask the chief a bit gongo so that you gather then they demonstrate all those things to them. What we need to do is to get more of our youth or children who are not in school to participate in some of these activities because um, we seem to be limited to only the children who are in school and so we need to have this uh, sort of clubs in the communities where we would use that a category of children who are also not in school so that we can get them involved and also to learn from what their colleagues are learning from school. While some have argued that the impact of environmental education programs for the youth will not be immediate, this project has evidenced behavior change in the communities and has made a positive impact on the lives of youth in coastal communities. The Hans Seidel Foundation is a German political foundation which acts in the service of democracy, peace and development. The foundation is engaged in more than 60 countries worldwide. In West Africa, it supports civic education, the rule of law, conflict prevention and the fight against climate change. The Institute for Environmental and Sanitation Studies was established to meet the nation's needs for broad-based education, training, research and advocacy in the science, policy and management of environmental and sanitation processes. The institute currently runs the environmental science program of the University of Ghana. Oh, 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 oh,